a 1980 Mercedes-Benz 600 Pullman limousine, a titanic of a luxury car. Let's take a closer look. The Pullman was built between 1963 and 1981. Back then, it was developed with only one goal in mind. That was to be the most luxurious car ever. Cost no object. And this is what they came up with. And of course, it was the most luxurious and it ended up being the most expensive as well. There are so many incredible things about this car that I can tell you. For example, here in the front, look at, these, look at this grill. It's almost like the gates to an entrance of an estate. It's just so regal. Speaking of regal, I love this hood ornament. I think Mercedes uh, luxury cars with this hood ornament is just, it's just something that has to be there, according to me. Very vertical headlamps. I mean, this car weighs three tons. It has disc brakes all around. It has a huge 6.3 liter V8. It has self-leveling air suspension. It has a 112 liter fuel tank, but the most incredible thing about this car, according to me at least, is its hydraulic system. You see back then, electric motors weren't that small, they weren't that quiet, they weren't that efficient, so it was hard to fit them inside the doors for operating the windows or for the seats and so on. So instead, what Mercedes-Benz did was develop this most incredible, insane hydraulic system to power yeah, the windows, the doors, the boot lid, the mirrors, um, sorry, the, the sunroof rather, everything. And there is, you know, this, there's a system of pumps and hoses. The system runs at a pressure of over 2000 PSI. That's mind boggling. I mean, a tire pressure generally today that I put into my car uh, and my tires is about 33 PSI, I think. Can you imagine 2000 PSI? It's insane. I mean, look at the side profile of this car. It's huge, it's enormous. The front wheel and the back wheel are in different postal codes. This is, of course, also very popular as the Bond villain car. All the baddies drove this. And also, it's a very regal car. A lot of political figures also have this as a limousine. Apparently, Kim Jong-un also has one. Apparently. If it's good enough for him, well, it's good enough for me, I would say. You could have this in different configurations. Of course, the Pullman is the long wheelbase limousine. And if you take a peek inside, you can already see that there are rear facing seats as well. So it is perfect for those, you know, meetings with foreign delegates or for Bond to be sitting at gunpoint while the baddie talks to him, you know, <laughs> like I see in the movies. But curtains on the inside, just look luxurious detailing like over here this chrome window frame all these beautiful little louvers along the side here on the inside um, gorgeous curtains on the inside a long trunk i love the stealth black color contrasting with the shiny chrome uh, bumper dual exhausts again because of that 6.3 liter v8 i mean they had to come up with a brand new engine just to power all of the systems that this car was running all the hydraulics and to move this three-ton Titanic. Over here you have access to that huge fuel tank. And one of my favorite things about this hydraulic system is the boot release. It goes up and you push the button and it goes back down. I mean, this is luxury. At least it was luxury back in the 80s. It wouldn't be a 600 Pullman without a place to fix your flags. But what's more interesting to me is this engine. Now because, like I mentioned, they have this incredible hydraulic system, um, the engines that Mercedes made at the time were not strong enough to power this car and all its ancillary systems. So they came up with this 6.3 liter V8 with mechanical fuel injection. It makes 250 horsepower, has a four-speed automatic gearbox, and goes to rear-wheel drive. Believe it or not, this could reach speeds of about 
200 kilometers per hour. So perfect enough to chase down James Bond or perfect enough to get away from, uh, you know, whoever's trying to chase you if you're a political figure, I suppose. But just gargantuan, gargantuan amounts of torque. Well, the Pullman limousine is definitely the car that you don't want to be driving, but rather be driven in. Nevertheless, let's take a look inside the front. First thing that catches my eye are these really old retro uh, phone, uh, car phones. There's three of them, in fact. Really interesting to see. But again, such a luxurious interior. Deep seats, wood on the dash, wood along the doors, wood along the A-pillars, along the window frame. I love wood in a, in, a, in, a, in a luxury car. Let me hop inside. The ingress is also pretty easy. The door is actually quite large. And getting inside, there's so much of shiny metal, so much of chrome. Everything is dazzling. You have the hood ornament right in front of you. It feels like you're driving a yacht, a land yacht. It's very titanic in, in many ways. A thin two-spoke steering wheel. You have a automatic transmission with this uh, gear shift over here. Really wide, but uh, to be honest, it's not that wide. I mean, the, the dimension that really gets to you is the length of this car. But yeah, let's take a look in the back seat. Now this is where you want to be. If you were ever driven in the back of this car, you were important in a good way, in a bad way. It depends, but oh my God, it's amazing. The seats are so comfortable, they're so bouncy. They have so many springs and box springs inside. It's so deep and luxurious, you just kind of sink in. Really nice fabric seats. Again, you don't need leather for luxury. I think it's, a, it's, it's really comfortable. A lot of glass, that's one thing you can notice right away. Everything is just very shiny and, uh, you know, a lot of wood, chrome and glass. Let's check out the seats, the rear facing seats. Ah, so these are a lot less comfortable. So my knees are upright. I don't have any side, uh, sorry, under thigh support. It's also kind of, it tips forward when you sit. So it kind of tips forward and it's, if you accelerate, I can assume that you kind of slip off. But actually this fabric also kind of clings to you. So it's really, you don't really budge at all. It kind of clings to you really well. A lot of, interesting instruments like i mentioned the um all the controls are completely hydraulically operated which is just phenomenal and, and the cool thing about hydraulics is that it's really quick now watch this boom <laughs> boom that's that's so fast it's so cool i think this is probably the party trick of the pullman it's just this this nonsensical hydraulic system as uh, a, a sunroof as well Let's see. Oh. oh, look at this. There is also a divider. So if you don't want your, driver, your, your chauffeur to eavesdrop on your conversation, well, there you go. And then you can put it down and say, chop, chop, take me, to, take me to office. So this is another window. So there's two windows that you can operate. And yeah, the seats itself can be reclined. Oh my goodness, I got to try this out. Oh, <laughs> Fantastic, but it's the entire bench. So if you want to lie down and your co-passenger doesn't, well, I can imagine you can fight over this. And there's a large sunroof as well. I could spend a long time in the back of the Pullman and be very, very happy. Of course, cigarette lighters and ashtrays for each door, for each passenger, of course. There's also a switch for the light up here although i must say it is very dim and some handles and of course you have you have curtains as well yeah i mean what more can i tell you guys just just take a look it's it's so different than the kinds of cars that uh, i'm used to let's go take it for a spin
All right, so now in the Pullman. Wow, first impressions. The automatic gearbox, this has a four-speed automatic transmission. It's quite clunky, to be honest. It's not so butter smooth. I mean, this car was developed in the mid, uh, in the early 60s. So I'm guessing the technology back then was not that great. Seating position is also not the most ideal. Again, the importance is not given to the people at the front, necessarily, at least in the limousine, for the people in the back. So I am sitting fairly close to the dashboard. This backrest is fairly upright. I'm sure there's a way to adjust that. Steering is <laughs> very vague. I mean, you're, first of all, this car weighs 3,000 kilograms. It has uh, air suspension, self-leveling, a 6.3 liter V8, which only makes 250 horsepower. But the point is, there's a lot of torque. In fact, the uh, VMAX of the Pullman is about 200 kilometers per hour. That's plenty quick to chase down James Bond, if you ask me. It's not the most insulated. Um, of course, these windows are shut and I do hear a little bit of wind. Uh, the engine, on the other hand, is very quiet. The pedal weight is pretty good. It is fairly responsive, but there is a little bit of this kind of sideways lateral floating kind of a feeling because it's really long. So sometimes it feels like the rear of the car and the front of the car are having an argument, you know, on which direction they want to go. And there's like a telegram that has to be sent from the front wheels to the back wheels to tell the back wheels what to do. So it, it's all a bit disconnected. But that's okay, I mean, this is not a sports car. This is not the AMG or the, or the other beautiful sports cars that we've been driving here at this event. So a very unique experience. It is fairly brisk and you don't, you don't feel the speed at all. The chassis doesn't seem to flex much either. It's again that soft suspension with, the, uh, with that self-leveling air suspension. It's just, it doesn't really connect you with the wheels and of course doesn't connect you with the with the road either so it's a very wafty floaty sensation the interior is so luxurious so plush love the wood the dials are gorgeous everything has a nice weight even the shifter for the automatic transmission is a nice clodunk clodunk you know and if i if i kick down the engine becomes a lot more audible but the shifting in the automatic transmission the four speed auto is a bit more abrupt it's not as buttery smooth as modern transmissions on the whole though visibility is pretty good it's really funny i have two inside rear view mirrors i have one to see actually out the back and i have another one to see the people sitting in the back seat if they're talking to me i can make eye contact with them a lot easier with this other second lower um, rear view mirror I also really love seeing the three-pointed star, the, you know, the, the hood ornament at the end. But it's also nice that I see the haunches for the end of the, uh, along the edges of the hood because I can really place this car quite easily. For such a long car, the outside rear view mirrors are so tiny, so it doesn't really give me the best view. And because of those, uh, well, they look beautiful, the louvers on the back window, Look beautiful, but it obstructs the view um, of the back. I can't really see where the trunk is. So I don't really know how far back it is and there are no parking sensors. So you're gonna need somebody to get out and help you out when you're reversing in, uh, in tighter parking areas. But this car just shouts luxury, shouts, you know, royalty. And I think that's what the limousine, uh, that's what limousines are supposed to do and this is probably one of the best. So, if you like this video, please subscribe. If you want to see us do more of these classic car videos, let us know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.